So between parts I've been introducing another new route and I've also been doing my own little save and I discovered that there are mods in the game and check out the marketplace. Welcome back to City Bus Man. Yes, hello boys, girls, and all those in between, my name is Lucy Michaela, and welcome back to City Bus Manager yet again. And between parts, um, I reminded myself, well, by accident actually, um, that in one of the recent updates to the game, they added the ability to add in custom vehicles. So this does mean if you're playing in Europe, or if you're making a save in Europe, if you go to the workshop, you'll see there are now new options on the workshop, just down the bottom here, for buses and you can pick them and as you can see there's already some as the most popular items the northern counties palantine for example which we may actually install potentially and have play around with those at some point but there's all plenty of stuff on it olympian solaris uh, uh, Urbino, you've got the van hall bent b10m all sorts of buses are in the game it's pretty much the only thing people are adding to the game now um, it's it's actually brilliant um, and it is a nice touch and it, it gives the developers time to fix the game rather than focus on installing and building new buses for the game what this does mean is we have actually got Optair Solos, we have the Optair Solo M920, the only one that's in the game is lengthwise, but we'll just have to be imaginative with that. But we have two lengths in Vario 200, I've got the 8.9, but there's also an 11, uh, sorry, a 10.8 meter as well, which we need to unlock. And there's a Plaxton Pointer 2, baby, we can have darts, let's go. So, what does this mean for us? Well, I think what we're going to do is, all the new, so we're going to still use CETOs to represent the Solo SR, just for now, because there isn't a Solo SR mod yet, no one's made that, if someone wants to work on that, or is working on it, then brilliant. So all our newer CETOs will keep, but if we go into our bus fleet, what we're going to be doing is the older vehicles, so we're going to replace these 0530s with the 0530N when we unlock that. Um, and then we actually only have new Zetos on this save, which is good. But when we ever install new buses now, we'll be getting some newer, um, like, UK buses, like Enviro 200s, Dennis Stars. We'll be repairing those up, and I do really want to get started on that. It's really fun. I've been playing with it on the other save, and they have some really good capacity. If you look at the marketplace, they've got, like, 55 passengers with 33 seats, and I believe these are based on, like, real-life capacities as well. Like, even the point, the plaques and point two. Only 29 seats, but it's 59 passengers can fit on it, so that'd be really good for your sort of high-frequency city routes as well as just being an option to have. And it means that when you go into the marketplace and go to second hand, you get a lot more variety on what you can buy rather than seeing the same vehicle 17 times. Um, so we have three pages worth, and there's a bunch of older stuff in there as you can see. I did also install a couple of double deckers. Um, now we haven't got any of those in our game just yet, um, but I just need to remind myself what I've actually installed. Um, how do I actually? Can you check that on this? Um, is it even showing this? I don't even think it is showing it. Yeah, I thought so. Um, I've, there's a way to check, but basically there are. Um, hang on, you go to your workshop files, don't you? And then, no, that's not right. How do you see what you've installed? I know you, I used to be able to do it, but I can't remember how you do it now. Browse. Subscribed items. Oh, missed it. Uh, subscribed items, there we go. So there's an ALX400, which I know is in the game already, but there's a, a modded one as well, with the doors on the correct side as well. And that's the point with these. These are all the doors on the correct side. There's also two Sataros, the Mark One, which is the older Sataros, and then the uh, uh, 0530N as well. Um, and a Plaxton Centro, because why the heck not? And a Temsa Safari for when we play around with Express Routes. I want to have a go playing around with that. So, yeah, we've got plenty of stuff in there, and hopefully um, these brilliant people that are good at modding these things can actually... Get around to building things like the Solo SR. So what we're going to do today is we're going to expand our street up here. We're going to get some more medium parking spaces on the go. Uh, so let's actually move those up a little bit just so that they're matching the other side there. Just to keep the place very nice and organised. One of our buses has a flat tie, but that's fine. Let's go to the marketplace and why not get ourselves some second-hand vehicles to have a play around with. Uh, let's go for 8,000 for this Dennis Dart Plaxton Pointer. Accepted. Brilliant. And let's get two of those. We can play around with these for some of our future routes, which is going to be fantastic. We need to give these some plates, so I think what we're going to do is go onto here. Um, and I'm just thinking, what's good plates to use? We could use the ones currently at Stagecoach Yorkshire, couldn't we? Because those are pointed twos, they're SLFs, of course. Um, and they are probably earmarked for withdrawal very, very soon. But what I'm actually going to do is go onto my flicker. Um, just have a look on there and see what I can find. Um, 
that's likely to, I'll tell you what will have been withdrawn, is the ex-London ones. So we'll use those, LJ05, GOP, that used to be PDL117 for Arriva London North, and then we'll go for sister vehicle, LJ05, GOU, which was PDL108, uh, 118, sorry, uh, I can't, it's not typing, LJ05, GOU, and there we go, that's two vehicles from the old Arriva London North fleet, Let's get these cleaned, fueled, and cleaned inside. Cleaned, fueled, washed. And then let's get some repairs done on these. Let's just repair all four things there. Just we don't want any potential wear and tear to affect the bus itself. And there we go. Now, the route that I added. So, previous part, we obviously added the 305 and 305A. But I've also introduced the new 201. This route runs from Basingstoke City Centre. Or town centre, no, Basingstoke is a city, I'm pretty sure it's a city, anyway. We're from Basingstoke centre, down this way, and then along these A roads here, up this way, and to an area called Old Basing up here, terminating at Old Basing Village Hall. We are going to have another service going the opposite way that's going to run there, and it's going to go through these industrial estates here. Uh, but we're also going to introduce one service today that I was thinking of off camera while editing the previous episode. And that is the 305B, which is going to serve this industrial estate here. And to do that, I'm just going to see what makes the most sense. It looks like if we go around this way, we could sort of go into here maybe. Or we could just go through this main, down this main road, serve the whole thing, come up this way. Obviously then serving this area too. But potentially maybe come up and around here or something. Or come up and around this way. In fact, we'll do that. We'll go up this, around this way, divide this Tesco's. Um, let's do one big circuit around there. And I think that'll be the 305B. Uh, so let's have that's introduced that now and then what we can do is tomorrow we can launch that with the Dennis darts The ex London Dennis darts and see how that performs. Um, now I think the other routes were purple based Let's have to sort of hot pink for the 305B now. I can't remember what stand the other ones used um, Let me just get up my own video because Because I am professional like that. Please ignore that background noise if I did leave that in Okay, so going to stands E to G, which is where the previous ones went from. Stands E to G there. Uh, the uh, 201 uses H to L, um, and then there's going to be one more stop here as well. But yeah, so 305B, um, I don't remember what the other routes do, but what I want the 305B to do is go down this way, like so. And then down this way, which I believe is where the A route went as well, the 305A, and up Osborne close, and then around this way. Do the same thing for this route, but then follow the main road. Here, so it's sort of like a combination of the other two routes, but then instead of going up to the estate that the other two go to, we're going to go to a different estate on this one. So around this way, and up to here, and now we're going to go around this way. We're going to go straight around to this stop. Good, it actually went straight around, that's good. Um, Wade Road top, very good. And then we're just going to serve the stops that are already here for now, because I think that seems best for everyone. Um, let's go down here for the stop on this service. Around Saxon Way uh, to here for the Tesco Express and Cromwell Inn. Great Binfield Road. Well, this is Great Binfield's Crescent there, but there you go. And Field Way. And then let's just follow this all the way around, I guess. Um, we may even introduce another service that does this the opposite way or something. Um, but yeah, let's just have a play around with this for now. Center Court. And then we kind of want to have this served. Now, this has got a. What if we do this actually? Hang on. Come back up to here. Just before the Wade Road top stop here. Let's just have it stop at this on the way here. And then also on the way back as well. Just so that we sort of get like that centre place really well served. And then coming back down into town down this way. Very good. And this again should be a nice little service for us to operate. And hopefully should provide um just yeah buck fast close there's a buck fast close in macclesfield fun fact uh rising sun make sure you use the right one because everyone's not on the road facing stoke rail station and then back to stands e to g very good there we go that's the 305b let's get the timetable in um i don't know what the timetable on the previous routes was but i think we're just going to run this We'll go 20 past the hour from 6.20 to 5 to 6.20. So it'll be like a 12 hour lease. Well, it runs over the, like a 12 hour period. Um, 
I think. Oh no, let's go 720 just to be a little bit different, but also just to keep that service there. Every f hour. Monday to Friday. Very good. And then going on to here, uh, the China Center, wait five minutes, and then do the circular, and then the China Center back, wait five minutes, like that. So we sort of. The China Center will be the timing point at both points of the route. I think that just. It adds that sort of. In, it should be a very solid route that way. Um, and it means that the route is just over 60 minutes. A little bit of a shame, it means we have to use two buses, but I think that should still work out in the long run. On Saturdays, it will start at 7.20 instead. And on Sundays... Uh, custom times. I'm going to try to make it definitely only have for one bus, but also it will split the day. So we're going to go 8... Oh, 09.20... 10.50 12.20 which should be right because that should be yeah then lunch break 14 or yeah 14.50 uh, 17.20 and 19.50 there we go three buses in the morning three buses in the afternoon slash evening with a nice break in the middle for a potential lunch break for the bus driver there and there we go. That should be fine. And then that route should be able to be run with a couple of these pointers. We can actually get a third pointer potentially on there as well, which would be good. Um, let's actually look in the marketplace for a third Plaxton pointer if we can. For some reason, that's just changed position. I'm not too sure why. I think these are basically identical um, in terms of, like, theoretically for the game to read. There we go. There's a couple more there. That's good. Uh, let's go for a... Can we get six and a half grand for that? Just see if they'll take a lower offer. Rejected. Rats. Okay. How about you? 5-7? Can you go 5-5? Five, five? Yeah! Let's go. Right, brilliant. Let's get this one sorted. It actually didn't need that much work doing, but it'd be nice to just get that sorted. Um, repair it up, like so, and there we go. And then we can get the other two painted. I have made uh, repaints for them. Now, I've had to use the in-game repainting system for now, but unfortunately, because they're modded, and obviously people um, modding probably don't fully understand the way the game works. In, it's probably hard to get it to work with the repaints. Um, the the shapes don't quite blend properly, so I will show you when the first one here is repaired. It works, but it's not quite perfect. So where I need to do proper repaints, where you actually do it in like Paint.net um, or like Photoshop, I'm gonna have to do that with these because they just need it. We do have expansion available. We also have uh, like the network pre to premises expansion coming up as well in the 15, but we don't really need that. We also have articulated buses we could research. We'll come back to that, I think, um, and we'll see if we do need those. Potentially, we'll play around with them. We we'll just have to see. It is interesting to note, though, that the Enviro 208.9 meters and the Pointer 2s do fit into small spaces, which is very good, even though they are just long enough to sort of not look too out of place in a medium space. So let's get this one painted. I'll show you what it looks like. I didn't give the other one a plate as well, that new one I just got. Let me just quickly, um, quickly have a look once more at this. So the next one is GOX for this one. LJ05 GOX, which was PDL119, I believe. Um, one of those three, I think it was 119, was an absolutely hellfire dart. Um, I was a big fan of it. Let's have a look. Local buses. There you go. So you can see it's almost perfect. There's just like a bit of pink that sticks up around this. Um, and this isn't the, this one's actually done pretty well. This one works pretty well. But the Enviro, for example, there's a few bits of the bat that don't work properly. You'll see the roof doesn't work brilliantly on this. Perfect, like perfectly, sorry. But overall, it's a brilliant bus, and it means that the doors are on the correct side of the vehicle now. Which, if you look, obviously on the other buses, they're on the wrong side. So it's going to look a bit odd in that respect. But you just need to use a little bit of creative thinking, a little bit of imagination. Uh, just try not to think about it too much. Let's paint that, and let's also, while we're here, remember to repair the Solo SR, quote unquote that broke in the previous part, or the previous trip. And then we're just going to run around the fleet and just get a bunch of stuff here all installed. Like so. Don't know what that's having done to it, but there you go. Oh, I, I set it to have free Wi-Fi installed and everything, that was it. 
Another one repainted up ready for fleet work. Very good. That should be a good. And these should make a nice launch day for the 305B. I'm hoping they'll be a good size for the route as well. Because they're basically CETOs, but like actually designed to look like British buses. Which is fantastic. Now, looking at this, we do also have the Optair Solos to play around with and the Enviro 200, as I said. And then we're going to see what we unlock next bus-wise. It looks like, did we just get that? The Enviro 200, we did, yeah. So we've got the Enviro 200 10.9 meter. Again, this is your full length Enviro 200. Should be really nice to play around with that as well. Um, and we can actually have those go as new as 2018, as there was a few 2018, and even three 2019 examples of the Enviro 200 Classic, which is what it was rebranded as, um, before they fully dropped the, the bodywork um, in favour of the MMC. Um, I don't know if this was designed in the last part or not, but I've got the bus wash here now, and the office here, so we've got two offices, and we have the service centre as well, which has been expanded. I'm pretty sure I expanded this off-camera, but if I didn't, then you've already seen that. But yeah, so I've got this quite a nice little design, and it means we can keep expanding this this way, but if we run out of space, this office will have to move. <sighs> Excuse me. I'm just going to have a look around the fleet now, because I want to upgrade a few bits on these. So everything's having free Wi-Fi fits, so I want to upgrade the... Um, 7900s to also have um, next stop announcements as well. So I'm just going to go through them and make sure that they're all being fitted. Oh, free Wi-Fi will be fitted to every bus, so if it doesn't really have it, it will be fitted at some point. That. Probably going to need more staff here just for like the depot shuttling and stuff. So I'm just going to work on that now. That's pretty much okay. This one needs a desperate bit of work done to it. One of the uh, Sitar or Sitaras there. Probably didn't need pass I think this one came with it by new. Or I just fitted it now like an idiot, one of the two. But yeah. Okay, so we've got a 101 ready to roll. So the 101 we are using full size buses on. I think we're going to prioritize that to have the 23 plates on for sure. Um, so let's get the 23 plate out on that. Um, saying that, if you look at the actual usage, it's only saying it up to 28 passengers on it. Um, what was the actual numbers on that? Yeah, they're not super popular this route. So we could potentially get some Enviro 200s for that route, but for now we'll stick so we'll stick Sataras on there then. So we'll stick one of these Sataras out on that. Let's just have a quick check to make sure. So we do have air conditioning we need to put on all buses. I want air conditioning on all my buses and I want Wi-Fi on all my buses because in real life that's sort of your main priority for buses. Now that's a point. Do they go on the right side of these? I've not actually seen. Do they use the doors correctly on these? Oh they do. Oh yeah. Fun fact about the dart, by the way, I need to look at this one actually do the repaint for it, like the proper repaint, but apparently you can actually modify it with the repaint to only have the front door, like most UK buses do. So that'll be interesting to play around with, I reckon. Anyway, we've got a 305A and a 305 shift going, so now these two, um, we're actually using full-size buses on there, so we'll put the 305A to have a 23 plate, and then we're going to use the darts to launch the, um, the B, and see if it works. If it doesn't work, we will, of course, change it for something else. Um, we've got any other 23 plates? There's one there. There we go. Okay, what's this little seat at the top doing? That's a bit odd, isn't it? We need more, like, small spaces now, don't we? Because we've got these uh, darts taking up a couple of spaces as well. Um, potentially, we could even replace the CETOs with the darts. I know the CETOs are newer, quote-unquote, but the darts have more capacity. Or we could just use the, the CETOs on something else. Now, the 302, this is where I'm forgetting what, because I've been playing a different save. The 302, we've been using CETOs on. However, it is getting a bit more capacity on it, um, like getting closer to capacity. Let's get a couple of Enviro 200s for that then. Um, oh, uh, load this in. I will say, by the way, the, the, the quality on the, the modeling as well is so good. Like, for a game this basic, it really does look like a dart. Like, you just it just screams dart, especially the back bit. I'm just really happy with these, but the Enviro 200, I'll show you that now, this is just brilliant. Let's get like a couple of Enviro 200s in the fleet, and I'll send CETOs out again on the route, but we're going to play around with this on there, and see if maybe that'd be better. So let's get a CETO out on this for now. We also have a lot of driver stress going on, so I will work on that. I'm hoping we don't need to do too much work on that. The 304... Is that industrial route again? Very capacity on the seat. We'll use CETOs again, but we will look at upgrading that. So, potentially, what we're going to be doing here is using Enviro 200s to replace our CETOs on the route, which means the CETOs are newer, but obviously, we could sell them on. Um, 
we will have to see. Here's our first Envira 200 in the fleet. Let's get that refueled, uh, refueled, cleaned, washed, and then let's get the thing fixed up, ready for service the following day. Well, not the following day, probably this afternoon if we're lucky. And we'll get one more of those. There's one there. Actually in the red livery as well, so this could be potentially just the next London vehicle. If you look, this one is in a right state. Actually, it, does, it looks worse than it actually is. But let's get those repaired up and good to go. We have quite a lot of buses now then, and we're not really utilising them all, which is fine, because we can introduce more routes. 303, definitely full-size buses. Let's get a... We've got any 320, this 320, this one's free here. Let's get that out on there. Very much, the 7900 there. I think this is now ready to go as well for service, the 101. Did we just decide this before and I've forgotten already? Probably. Let me just have a look at what's out. Um... Oh, the Sataros, that was it. So we'll get another Sataro on this then. Like I said, when we unlock the Sataro, the modded one, I've actually just recently installed, we will utilise those, it's because they have the doors on the correct side of the road. But it's really big news that we have this, um, you know, this change of things happening, this change of pace. So now we're all stressed drivers here. So what we need to do is hire a couple, a few more drivers. So we're going to just hire a few more, like, skilled... Oh, none of them are friendly, though. Okay. Let's go for the least stressed we can here. So these green ones are the least stressed. Oh, they fixed the colours on this, I just realised. This was wrong before, they fixed the colour on it. They had it backwards, I don't know if you noticed last time, but so this would be red when low, but then green when high, and it should be the way around. Um, 304, uh, just assign this to my 23 play, let's get that out there. Got another 304 and a 301 going as well. Apple. So, okay, we need a lot more drivers. Okay, hang on. Let's go as friendly as we can to start with. So you're quite friendly, low skilled, but look, we don't need to worry about too much about skill right now because we can, you can train the skill into them. What's hard is to make them more friendly. So we have to just go with that for now. Let's just get these people out on runs. 304 should be a full size bus. We haven't got any free. What's up with these? Are these assigned shifts. They are. This one's being worked on. Is that free now? Yeah, 304. Go 301. Uh, did we decide that was Cito's? We did. Let's get some CETOs going then. Good. Off you go. 201. Um, again, this has only had like one day's running. I put a full-size bus on that and it barely got any passengers. But that was a late night run. So I will put um, a dart on there. Because that's like a halfway point between big and small. Um, and then a 302. Uh, oh, no, definitely not a CETO. That's too crammed. Get another dart out on that then. In fact, let's get one of these Envira 200s out there if we can. Let's Nate. Let's give these plates quickly. Uh, we're going to give these the plates of the ones near us, the um, KX57s that we've been using. We've seen around Mac. These currently are doing our free route three and route ten boards. So they have now got combined boards, the two routes, and so the, those combined boards are being run by the KX57s. So I think what we'll actually do for this run is stick a Sataro on there, the 302. 305B, so first day of service. We want the starts on there as we planned. Any more low stress? No, we've run out of low stress drivers. Now, what do we need for more bus drivers? We need lockers. Okay. We need another corridor. We're out of corridor space. This is not good. Let me put a second corridor on this side of the building. Which will look odd, but it is worth it in the end, I promise. And put another door here. And we'll put one here. And we'll put a door to the kitchen on this one as well. But the bathroom won't have a door. What we'll actually do is put a door to the office from the bathroom for them to get through there. And then just put lockers down. And then get more staff, more bus drivers. Let's have a look. Any more friendly ones? No, but there's a novice there. There's a very friendly one, very much. Oh, two of them. Oh, three of them. We got very lucky there. Get as many drivers as we can. Another friendly and another friendly one as well. And another friendly one. And we can now go through and look at the ones we have. And just start getting rid of the unfriendly ones. So we have this driver here. Very unfriendly. And to raise their friendliness, you'd have to put the wage up to like £18 an hour as you can see. So rather than that, goodbye my friend. You're not friendly enough for us. We want friendly drivers here. We are friendly drivers incorporated basically. Uh, this bus, this mechanic is repairing. The oh, I just looked at the wrong thing there. That's great. Well, that's fine. Uh, Gregor Becker, which I believe does have a shift assigned, but look, low friendliness, 
Goodbye. Any more? Unfriendly drivers. No, we're okay. Good. Very good. Now, with the trainees, we need to get those training as soon as possible. If I train this driver now, I won't be back till 5 in the afternoon. So tonight, we're going to send a bunch of drivers on training around about 6, 7 o'clock in game this evening. Anyway, we have another... That's another uh, shift or the 305B here. Uh, let's get another driver out on there. Uh, Alex, uh, Alice even. 304, we just picked these. Like I tell you, my memory is so bad. 304 is Cito's for now. I believe we said that, didn't we? Uh, the 305B again. Another dart, please. Thank you. We need more darts. We definitely need more darts because they are useful. We also could maybe do with the more Enviro 200s as well, though. Uh, maybe play with the Optair Solos as well, I think. But let's get another dart in the fleet. At least that's new. We want second hand. Another dart, please. Uh, let's go for eight. Can you can you take... This will fit quite a bit to this. Can we, do you want to take seven five? You do. Lovely. Uh, you need to wash outside and then a paint job. We can actually get you out in service then. You are still being repaired. But everything else, I believe, is done on that one. Good. So we just need the dart to be sorted. Let's refuel, clean... And then technical condition, get this fully repaired. And we'll paint it up afterwards, so start repair. And then, again, we need another plate for the dart here. Very good. Our next one in the Arriva Northwest Rejections was LJ05GPO. So, let's pretend in this world that these were put up for auction rather than just completely sent, I believe, to the scrap gods. Um, and this actually, believably, could be a TNG vehicle because it's in red, but we will paint it. And we can now use this in service. Um, this can replace the CETOs on certain routes. I think we'll use the Enviro 200's 8.9's to replace the CETOs on routes like the 304. Which is very much at capacity. So the next 304 we get, we will do that. Now in order to not forget this, I'm now going to start writing down where these are all going. Because we're going to get lost here and I'm going to forget. So, let's make note of what we need on what route. So, looking at what we've... Oh, hang on. And this is where I wanted to show you the Enviro 200. So as you can see, it is very well... Oh, they've actually... Oh, no, yeah, you can see there. It doesn't quite work up here. I don't know what that is, but it's fine. I will be able to do it properly with the actual repaint. But you can see, this is a very well-modeled Enviro 200. This is actually as well-modeled as it is in OMSI, I would say. So very impressive. So good job to the person who made this. When I find the names, I will put them in the description because uh, I will link the Steam pages down below. So thank you to the creators. Your links, I've linked all your stuff down below. So if you guys want to get these mods, do check the description. Anyway, let's apply that to there and let's get our first fleet livery Enviro 200 parked up and ready for service. Here it comes, heading down here to the parking spaces and boom, we have our first Enviro 200. Okay, so let's go through here and just work this out. So the 101... Now, I did just give this another full-size bus, but I think the 101 could potentially get away with Enviro 210 meters. So let's order some of those. We'll get some of those in. So the 101, when we have them anyway, will be E210 meters. I think they'll be long enough. The 201, which is what we have here, the 201 currently we have... Um, what did we just put on the 201 before? Oh, a dart. Let's see if that copes. Um, I think it looks like it will. So we'll look at that for now. We'll put the 201 aside for a moment. The 301 and the 3... So the 301 definitely, I think, with those numbers there, can cope with Aceto because it has busier periods. But this here, we can add additional peak time services. So that can last with Aceto's, which are, of course, also solo SRs. Um, when we get a solo SR, we'll replace the fleet with those the 302 150% definitely needs the darts so 302 is darts um, or we'll say, we'll say the E200 uh, 8 meters actually so we'll, we'll aim for those more but we can use darts as well because they're basically the same vehicle um, 303 is doing well with full sized so we'll just put full sized because then we can use all sorts on there the 304, we definitely just confirmed this definitely needs the E200 uh, 8 meters. Of course, that also includes darts. 305 and 305A. These two routes will definitely need full sized, I think, just to keep them used, the buses. But also, because they serve an industrial estate quite far off, so they also serve an estate on the way. Well, the 305B does do the same thing, but we're going to monitor the 305B with these darts, because I don't know if this estate will be as popular as this one. This is a big estate, this one. This I don't know about, but it does also serve 
like this as well. So we'll see how the darts are coping. This is a 305B, I believe. Yeah, let's see how it copes. So it's, it's sort of sitting about half capacity, but it looks like it's doing okay. This is also like 6.40 in the morning, though. So this could get busier. So potentially the 305B will also need the longer buses. But we just want to use the darts to launch it just to give it a little day of seeing how it goes. Because we can use these darts elsewhere, if not. So let's just see how it goes when we give it another day. In fact, have we got another 305B to watch? Because there should be two, right? Oh, no, there's only one. Oh, the 201 definitely needs longer buses. Look at that. The 201 is already at full capacity with a dart. So this will need full-sized as well. Okay. And the 305B. Ah, there you go. That just hit red, that 305B there. A lot of them are coming up to here, which is odd. We might have to do like a single circuit around there, maybe. We might introduce a 306 route, which will go up there and then up further north as well. But it definitely hit red just as we get into these peak times. Now, to be fair, if you're only hitting red at peak times, you could just introduce more peak time services. But in saying that, I do like the idea of keeping the same buses on there all day and then having the same amount of services all day, so like the same frequency all day. So we'll have a look. The 201 definitely needs full-size buses, so the next run round we'll put those out. 305B, I think, will go with um, something a bit different. We could potentially also use the E200 Tech, like the 101. Because if you look at the marketplace, so a 7900S fits 90 passengers, 33 seats. The E200 10.9 fits 61 passengers, 40 seats, which is only two more passengers than the Dart, actually. So this is actually smaller by three passengers the 8.9 it's crazy how the 10 meter only adds on like a total of five passengers that doesn't feel very accurate to me so the person who modif modded these could you make the environment 210 meter have maybe a few more passengers if that makes sense or is it because it's just the seats go up i think it's just the seats isn't it you get 10 more seats and only five more passengers how does that work this should be 10 more passengers i think that should be a 60 a 66 capacity bus, the Enviro 210 meter. So I would definitely change that if it was me. So I think what we'll do for now then, we will keep the 101 with those. The two, we'll get some of these in for the 101 specifically. We might even brand them up at some point. And then for the 305B, I think we're actually going to go for full size as well. So that's those all written down for now. We can always change those around later down the line. But I think to round up today's video, I think, where are we at? We're at 32 minutes. So I think that will be a nice round up to today's video. But I think to just definitely finish off the end, let's just have a look in the marketplace. See if we have any 10 meter Enviros on offer. Um, there is one. Should we get that booked in? Let's see. Can we get it for eight grand? Will you take that? Accepted. Very good. Any more on here? And then I'll design delivery off camera. There's one more there. Let's try and get that. This one's already at 6.5. Let's just take that. And we'll just do both. There we go. So them two will be used for the next 101 boards. Um, and I will leave it there. So thank you all very much for watching. Um, between parts, I will streamline the fleet a bit and see if we need all these vehicles. Because it does, does look like we're going to be up on CETOs now. But I'm also going to introduce a couple more routes off camera. Uh, we didn't actually do any new routes today apart from the 305B. We did that one new route, of course. But it was just sort of another route on the 305 series of routes that we have. So as I said, between parts, I will do some work on that. But I'm also going to try and do some research itself and try and get this Plaxton Centro, because I do like the idea of having the Centros doing um, some of these routes and replacing the Sitaros, because I do think Centros are a bit more my style. Anyway, guys, I will leave you all there, so thank you all very much for watching today's video. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure to like and subscribe, and if you do, um, come back. And if no, and if you did enjoy today's... Let me restart that. <laughs> But anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it off there. So thank you all very much for watching today's video. If you have enjoyed what you've seen today, then please do remember to hit the subscribe button when you go down below. And when you hit the subscribe button, make sure that you also turn on the notification bell so you get notified when the newest stuff from me goes live. City Bus Manager um, is now fitting in under the gaming videos back on Mondays. And it's still kind of my big game I'm doing, but I am going to be getting back into NIMBY Rails because I was recently reminded that there was a massive update to the game recently, which has changed things quite a bit. So we're going to do a new save on NIMBY Rails just to give us a refresh. Um, and I think we're going to play around with focusing on one area to start with and then expanding out later down the line when we do that. So do keep an eye out for that as well. I will let you know in the community tab. So again, those notifications being turned on will help you to see that. And finally, if you did enjoy today's video, please make sure to hit the like button as when I get likes on videos, I know that they went down well with you guys and I know to continue up those types of videos. Anyway, I've been Lucy Michaela and I will see you all next time. Goodbye for now.